Welcome to Thankful in Advent. This is December the 6th. I'm reading today from 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 12, 13 and 16. The story of where Nathan the prophet prophesies over King David. When your days are complete and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your descendant after you, who will come forth from you, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Your house and your kingdom shall endure before you forever. Your throne shall be established forever. I also want to turn you to Matthew chapter 1 and in this chapter Matthew lists a lengthy genealogy from the time of Abraham to the time of Jesus and he breaks this genealogy down into three lots of 14 generations. The first one is 14 generations from Abraham to David. The second one is 14 generations from David to the time that Judah went into captivity in Babylon. And then the third one is 14 generations from the time of the captivity in Babylon to the time of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I really struggle to read some of these very long genealogies in the Bible, mainly because they're long, secondly because they're genealogies, and thirdly because they contain lots of names that really I struggle to pronounce. But you know what? There's something very profound going on here. Matthew is a Jew. And the Jews were incredibly economical when it came to writing in Hebrew. They didn't waste a single word. So when Matthew, this Jew, writes this Hebrew genealogy, there's got to be something about it. There's got to be something going on. There's got to be something really profound tied up in this very long story that he tells. Now, if most of us are honest, we'd probably tell each other that we skip these huge genealogies and go straight to the Christmas story. But what I want to say to you is today, as we look at this passage, this passage is the Christmas story. You see, Nathan had prophesied over David that that his throne would have an eternal ruler on it. And this eternal ruler was going to be one of his descendants. That's why we need to pay attention to this genealogy. Now here's the thing. <laughs> this genealogy is really interesting. Matthew, the author, he's a Jew. He writes in Hebrew. He, he actually constructs this genealogy by three lots of 14 generations. That is incredibly profound for us. And here's why. The, the Hebrews used a, a kind of system, of a system of numbering called gematria. And it worked a bit like, a bit like your Roman numerals. You know, the Romans didn't really have uh, numbers to write, and so they stole letters from their alphabet, and how they put them together created a number system. And it's the same in ancient Hebrew. They didn't have any number symbols per se. What they did was take um, characters from their alphabet, their alphabet, and they assigned a value to each of them. And this is where it gets really interesting. Because the name David, when it's written in Hebrew, has three letters. And the total of those letters is 14. And you know, in Deuteronomy 19.15, we're told that every matter should be established on the basis of two or three witnesses. And so what we have in Matthew's Gospel is Matthew saying, 14 generations, 14 generations, 14 generations. He's saying 14, 14, 14. Or another way of saying that is David, David, David. Now, this might be lost on you right now, but here's the thing. He's got in his mind that on David's throne will be one who's a descendant, who's going to have an eternal kingdom. And he writes this genealogy of Jesus and wrapped up intricately into the middle of it is David, David, David. Let everything be established by two or three witnesses. He's saying, I, I want you to be in no doubt that this Jesus 
is the son of David. This Jesus is the descendant we've been waiting for. This Jesus is the king who's going to have an eternal kingdom. But you know, even if that was mind-blowing on its own, there's something else going on here because three fourteens is six sevens. Seven is the perfect number, so you've only got six sevens. Why is there less than a perfect number going on in this genealogy? Well, it's really simple. We get to the point of Jesus and we begin the seventh seven. Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of the Sabbath. It was on the seventh day that you were to rest. It was on the seventh day that you were to do no work. It was on the seventh day that you were to focus your attention on God in his entirety. Jesus is the manifestation of the Sabbath rest that all of humanity has been longing and waiting for. The third thing that's so amazing about Matthew's genealogy is that in the Hebrew world, um, they didn't mark credentials the same way that we do today. Uh, you wouldn't have had a business card with your MA or your PhD written on it or, or the fact that you had studied with such and such business school or whatever. In the Hebrew world, your credentials were your lineage. It's where you came from. And so people would always be looking for kings, and governors and people who, who um, who had served the Lord really well in their nation over time. And those are the kind of people that would be put in the genealogy to say, hey, here's my credentials. So in this Hebrew culture that was um, totally patriarchal, we have some really interesting anomalies. The first one is there are five women mentioned. What's even more amazing is three of them are Gentiles. Now, uh, a Hebrew or Jew would not be interested in that kind of information. They wouldn't want to be associated with that. But we have Tamar, we have Rahab, and we have Ruth. Oh, and by the way, their stories feature incest and prostitution. You know, we're then told that David was the father of Solomon, whose mother was the wife of Uriah. Matthew is hinting at the very fact that David had been an adulterer and he'd also been a murderer. And so really this genealogy contains a list of outsiders. Gender outsiders, racial outsiders, and then the kinds of sinners that you really wouldn't want to be associated with. Incestuous people, prostitutes, murderers, adulterers, and so on. The crazy thing is that under the law of Moses, every single one of these types of people were, were banned from coming into the presence of God. And yet Matthew carefully constructs this genealogy that says the Son of God identifies with all of them. So I want to pull all this together. There is a king that this planet has been crying out for. One who will rule in righteousness and justice, whose, whose, whose life is light, who will bring hope and peace and joy. And his throne is an eternal throne and it's in the line of David. And this Jesus, three times we're told, is the son of David, he's the son of David, he's the son of David. Not only that, but he is the ultimate manifestation of Sabbath rest. And as if that wasn't enough, God through his word then tells us, look at the kind of people that I as God am willing to associate with. I don't know where you are or where you're at, but I want to encourage you today, take stock of where you are in your life. And I don't care how down on yourself you are, Jesus' genealogy tells us that no matter where you are, he is more than happy to be identified with you. Not only is he more than happy to be identified with you, he is the rest you've been looking for because he is the king who was prophesied.